Hi guys, I am working from home today, so I thought I'd give you a backdrop of Paris, but welcome back to our uh, beginner series for HMOs. If you're um, getting into HMOs and, and starting out, then this is a series for you. Today, I'm going to uh, show you a video that I filmed back in September 2017 that still holds relevant and true today we're going to talk about the fire safety standards in your hmos um so yeah i'm going to plop the video directly in after this one and uh take it take it seriously i've just been sort of debating now with the council and a new client over some hmo uh, fire safety standards um and yeah it's just really important to get it right uh, the little cause guides your absolute bible so yeah without any further ado i'm going to put the video in and i hope you uh find value from this if you have any questions leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe our content okay so it's always a good idea to check with your local council's um standards so let's pick crawley and sutton as two examples so each council should have their own um standards document so always 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 check this First, it will provide, you know, I won't go into this in this video because we're going to touch on um, fire only, but this will go through every aspect that your council, um, you know, like amenity standards, all that sort of stuff um, that they expect. And it's always a great idea to contact your HMO uh, housing officer as well just to, to discuss things through. Um, Crawley, compared to Sutton as an example, Sutton has a lot more um, regulations here. They're a lot more stricter, I guess, and they've got their own little fire um, section at the back of that. So always make sure you find that document first. Okay, and then the, the document that I want to discuss today is the LaCour's um, Housing Fire Safety Guidance. Um, what we're going to discuss is, if I show you here, these are the different categories within this document. Um, shared houses, as an example, would be, say, a five-bedroom house, uh, student accommodation, all five uh, housemates are on one AST, um, and a bedsit type HMO is where, uh, say, in a five-bed house, the um, housemates are all on individual AST. So we're going to discuss this one as typically um, houses that we manage are bedsit type HMOs. So if we go down to page 43... Bum, bum, bum. It will give you a description here of the bed sit and um, what they are. Um, and what I want to do is I just want to go through the, the document and touch on the different aspects within a two-story bed sit type HMO. And then we'll go into three-story and show you the slight differences there. So escape routes... Um, an escape route, I've got notes here as well. Escape route is typically the stairway, hallway, landing, and lobby. Um, so if you look on the screen here, you've got this as the escape route. Um, you've got to have a 30-minute protected route. However, there are some discrepancy, which you can see in note 9 down here. That is not, it's ideal, that's the ideal option. However, in a two-story normal risk HMO, um, a normal risk HMO being that you've got no one of any disabilities and they're able-bodied, etc., you can have, if windows fully open, they would make a slight allowance, but again, you've got to check that. What we like to do in our HMOs is we fireboard the stairways nonetheless, and we do put um, fire doors on all the bedroom doors, along with intermittent strips, um, and yeah, along with uh, smoke alarms, we'll come, come to that. So, um, escape routes, and these, what I'm going to touch through, these are different areas that you need to get your HMO to comply with. Um, fire separation, so basically that's in between like having fireboards between the floorboards and the walls um, in a two bed a two story um, HMO there's no additional fire separation needed between units um, but they should be of sound traditional construction right fire alarms and this is where uh, people get confused and you've got to know your stuff in a two story HMO you need a grade D LD2 system and I'll explain I'll show you up above in a minute the different fire uh, alarm systems um, but these are basically interlink main smoke alarms with um, backup battery backup as well and that's got to be located throughout the escape route 
Um, if you've got cooking facilities within the bed sits, you'll need different things there. Um, let's say you don't and they're just in the uh, shared kitchen, you'll need um, an internet smoke alarm in each bed sit. So you've not only got them on the escape route, you need them in the beds, um, bedrooms as well. Uh, the kitchen will need a heat alarm, not a smoke alarm. And then any sort of cellar will need a smoke alarm as well. So let me show you uh, the explanation of fire alarms. We go up to paragraph 22. So everywhere it will say. So if you see here on this page, 24, um, you've got the different grades here. So we're looking not at grade A, B, we're looking at D. So D is a system of one or more mains power smoke or heat alarms with uh, integral back battery standby supply. So it will tell you what you need. There is no control panel um, with grade Ds. Uh, as we go on to three stories, you're going to need a grade A, which does have a... Um, what's it called? Uh, da, 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 control panel. It will tell you mixed grade systems here. Um, and here's your coverage as well. So we needed LD2. Uh, a system incorporating detectors in all circulation spaces that form part of the escape route from the dwelling and in all rooms or areas that present a high fire risk to occupants, i.e. risk rooms. Risk rooms could be bedrooms that are right next to uh, kitchens, for example, as typically fires would be started, you know, they would start in a kitchen uh, as a typical example. And then it will say sort of down here what the different types. If you look at a, we're not doing shared houses, so you come down to a bed sit. Uh, of two stories um, with individual cooking facilities within it, you'll need grade D, blah, blah, blah. But if we go down to three to six stories, you'll see that you need grade A. So let's get back to the guide. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, here we are. So, yeah, you really got to know your, your fire detection and alarm systems. Um, and typically, they'll, you know, a grade D LD2 system will need check in every. Um, there's maintenance to do as well, which I'll touch on down here, but they will need every four weeks you need to test that they work and you need to leave a fire log as well at the property, as well as having a main one that you keep records of as, uh, as well. And then annually, they're going to need testing. Um, a grade A system will need it done every week and um, every six months they'll need testing as well. Um, so you've, you've got to know all of this. If you're doing a HMO, this is what you've got to know. Lighting of escape routes. Um, so emergency escape lighting is required only if the, the route is long or complex or where there's no effective borrowed light. Um, conventional artificial lighting is required. In our HMOs, and what we advise our um, clients as well, we put um, emergency escape light, um, what's it, emergency lighting in there anyway because if it's nighttime, there's a fire and there's a power cut, um, it could be difficult to see, so we just think it's a good um, precaution to put in there, not greatly expensive either. But the guide say that they don't need it, but I'll check with your council as well. Everything I say in this guide, check with your council, but this is the national standard. Firefighting equipment. Um, a fire blanket is to be provided in each bedsit with cooking facilities and in shared kitchens, so make sure you've got a fire blanket in the kitchen. Uh, and a simple multi-purpose extinguisher on each floor in the common parts is recommended. So I know uh, mixed, there's mixed reviews on that. Some people don't like to put fire, fire, um, fire extinguishers in there. One, because tenants could sort of, especially in student HMOs, they can spray it and cause a mess. They also have um, their own um, maintenance cycle that they need and they need checks as well so it's really down to you we personally don't put them in our HMOs because we classify our HMOs as low risk but again check with your council and that sits with what you want to do uh, fire safety signage again if the sign uh, if the escape route is complex and you need it you know in a house people know that they're typically going to go down the stairs and out the front door, so it's not really necessary. Um, we have put ours, we have put signage in one HMO, uh, and we didn't in the other, in another HMO that we've done, um, simply because it can make it look very, what's the word, not homely and very institutional. So, um, yep, bear that in mind. Surface and finish, surface finishes and floor coverings. So this is basically, um, if you scroll up to page paragraph twenty eight and twenty nine. Um, there is some good uh, tips on this. You've got up here surface finishes. So 
da, 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 da. where is it? Yeah, you can read this paragraph here. You know, it really goes into detail on these pages, what they're sort of saying, the sort of combustible um, materials used in a house, and the same with floor coverings. You know, it's basically the carpets, you know, 80% wool, 20% synthetic fiber, 80 20 carpet. Yeah, you can have a good read of that. Um, you need to understand all of that. Let's get back up here. So, yeah. Two stories. Okay, management and maintenance of fire safety. This is what I was um, talking about a minute ago. So if I flip to my little guide on this side, I've made some notes. So yeah, that's doing your month monthly checks, making sure that the escape routes are free from any uh, obstruction. So you're walking around the property, you're making sure tenants aren't leaving massive boxes outside that would impinge getting out in, in case of a fire. Um, there's no flammable items like even loose paper and um, letters building up. That's you know a source of ignition. Um, you want to make sure that there's no candles knocking around that sort of stuff. Um, checking that fire doors work properly. Um, they're not being propped open. There's no damage to them. They they close by themselves, obviously because you want the intermittent strips to work. So you're basically going around the property and you're doing your checks. So um, what we do at VC Homes is that I go around and I do a uh, communal area inspection and external inspection, and I'll detail all of this in a report as well as the fire safety logbook that I do, which tests the emergency lighting, um, the fire alarms. And all that sort of stuff, and I, and I make sure that I tick again on both documents that I've checked these fire routes and everything's working as should be. Um, yeah, and checking fire blankets and all that sort of stuff, and the artificial lighting, yeah, which I've covered. So yeah, so that's within this book. Um, also, it says which you know you've got to make sure that when you're kitting out a HMO, that all your um, furniture as you need to furnish the property is uh, compliant with any. Um, like furnish, furniture and furnishing regulations, which basically uh, all furniture um, needs to comply with the uh, fire resistant requirements. So you normally get a fire tag um, on the furniture. Um, so a good little tip is that obviously you don't want to keep that on there, but take a picture of the furniture with that and keep hold of the tags um, just in case you need them for future. So da, 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 I said, yep. Um, basement and cellars actually. Um, there's a bit in the guide up above which says that if you're using a cellar or if you're not using a cellar, there's different requirements. So you're going to need that fire separation. So um, the seat from from the cellar to the uh, first floor, you're going to need your fire board in to make sure that if there's a fire that starts in the cellar, you've got protection there as well as a staircase with fire doors and stuff like that. So read it. You're going to need to put a fire alarm in down there as well, um, smoke alarm. Um, as well, so you need to make sure that you understand that. Uh, da, 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 da. So, as you can see, like we'll go just typically from this picture um, fire detection system grade D, LD2 coverage. So, in uh, communal areas such as uh, the escape route, um, we do one on the upstairs landing and downstairs hallways. So you've got two smoke alarms there. We put one in every single bedroom and then we put a heat uh, alarm in the kitchen as well. Uh, da, 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 da. We actually have um, 60 minute, the FD30 means that they're 30 minute fire protection doors. We actually put 60 minute in there with the intermittent strips uh, as well, um, which is not necessarily needed at the moment because, um, well, it's just not needed, but we like to go above and beyond just to make sure that our housemates are um, looked after. And uh, yeah, this is basically little little sort of helps the, the this picture helps you sort of de depict what has been said in this uh, but moving on to three stories the main difference like I said is that fire detection uh, system you're gonna need a grade A system which means there is more maintenance to happen you've got to get your letting agent or yourself if you self-manage to get around there every week and do the checks there um, and as you can see you actually need um, some extra fire alarm panels by the front door, they say that you do need um, extinguishers, and there's just there's even more that you need to do with a three-story and above um, HMO. So you really, really have got to read this document. This is almost the bible for 
um, doing a HMO, get to grips, you, you need to know it. Okay, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found some value in that. If you'd like uh, any help getting your HMO up to standards or you'd be interested in our fully managed HMO service or any other service, then please get in contact. I'll put the email address on the screen now. So it should be lettings at vcc-homes.com. Thank you very much and uh, I'll see you next time.